so it is appears to be seven o'clock. Um, so we'll call the meeting to order at seven o'clock. Is there any public comment for items not on the agenda? Right, hearing none. Are there any uh, additions or changes to the agenda? All right. So let's get started. Thank you, Judy and Barbara and Jim for joining us. You're welcome. Um, so we wanted to talk about some town office staffing issues, which we're going to um, be dealing with very soon. And um, Judy, would you like to make your announcement? Um, I don't know if you shared well, I did. I sent my letter to all the select board members. Yes, so, and I forwarded. I forwarded it to Jim. Okay, uh, Katie. I think you got a copy. I hope so. Uh, right. Yes, I think I sent you many versions. Um, it, but the most recent one was dated March twenty second, and um, basically uh, and announcing my retirement, but also going with. Uh, from what I heard in our last meeting, the select board's um, preference for a, an election. So I sorted through the process that would allow that to happen. And in my letter, I have um, proposed a schedule for um, resignation, which would create a vacancy, which would be April 12th, uh, then being appointed as a temporary town clerk in an appointed um, capacity, and then the election dates going forward uh, with the election being June 30th. Yes, thank you very much, Judy. I okay. sent it to Jim, who was going to check, just double check the dates. Okay. And just for clarification, um, this, this is out of sequence, obviously, from my terms, and the reason is for family changes. Um, somewhat unexpected. Um, my sister moving to Ohio to take care of her new grandchild, leaving fewer people to care for my parents who are in their 90s. Um, and that's an increasing responsibility. And it just seems like the right time to do to make this change. We are very sad to see you leave. You've been amazing to work with, well respected and thought of in the community. So I know this will be a, a big surprise to a lot of folks in the community. And we're really gonna miss you, but we really appreciate your cooperation and understanding of helping us make a smooth transition. Thank you. And I, I will work hard to make sure it is as smooth as possible. So um, Cliff, do we have the memo where you can call up so we can review the dates? Yeah, give me a sec to track that down. It's not Judy, I, I just want to thank you while Cliff is doing that. Thank you, obviously, for your for your service, but also for your um, for coming forward. And it, it may I don't I don't want to I don't know what your preference might have been, but the giving the select board time to have a uh, process and do so in a uh, in public discussion because the little bit of research we did, we learned that it's really, that the select board has a job to do. And we wanna be open and transparent and with the public that, that we're, we're aware of that we, ha we have a job coming up to do and we're bringing our thought process into, into open discussion. So thank you for being willing to participate in that. Sure. Denise, it's the timeline draft that you wanna see, correct? Right. Okay. So we're all on the same page. Uh, I believe that's the most current version. Uh, no, it's not. Okay. <laughs> it's the one that's attached to the letter. Okay. Let me. Uh, With my signature. Let me grab that. It was a little more challenging coming up with the schedule than I thought. And I did consult with the Secretary of State, had them review it. Uh, they sent back corrections 
and suggestions. Okay, so great. What, Thank what you. I submitted has been reviewed by uh, JP, I forget what his last name is, but he's one of the Secretary of State um, election specialists. Great, thanks for taking that extra step. Mm -hmm. There we go. There it is. Oh, there we go. Um, I just, before we do that, Gail, I just wanted you to know we're not going to be doing your curb cut tonight. We'll be doing it on the 12th. Okay. I was kind of interested in this, <clears throat> this discussion too. Oh yeah, you're welcome to stay. I just wanted, just didn't want you to have an expectation. Yeah, well, I was hoping maybe, but <clears throat> anyway, it's okay. But I'm, I'm sad, I'm, Judy, I'm sad to hear this news. But oh, well, thank you, Gail. I'm sure we'll be able to find some wonderful person out there who wants to be a town clerk. All right. <laughs> so your effective resignation date would be April 12th. Um, and then the select board would appoint you um, to the position while we work on pulling together a special meeting election. Um, just a question I'm just thinking of right now. Does there have to be any kind of public informational type meeting as in connection to this special meeting? I guess maybe that's a Jim question. Uh, Denise, there does not have to be a public informational meeting held in conjunction with an election. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna clarify that the, uh, and Jim can, verify or correct that the reason I have to resign is because there has to be a vacancy in order for there to be an election. That's correct, Judy. And, and also another point of clarification is the, there, it, the idea, and I think it's a good idea uh, to appoint Judy as the interim to fill the vacancy while we wait for an election, but that's also there's nothing that dictates that step. Right. And um, Sharon had done some research on this. Um, apparently she had a phone conversation with Jim. I, I was looking for maybe an email exchange to see what questions were asked and the answers given to see if there was questions that we maybe hadn't thought of. But apparently there was a phone, only a phone conversation, so. And then I circulated the memo, Denise, with a specific invitation that if people had questions after reading the memo, please let me know, uh, because there were several days be between my memo and our meeting during which I could have looked up answers if people had questions. So I just want to say that out loud. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that there was no email. There was no email, Denise, there's often not an email. And there in the future is often not going to be emails. There can be a conversation and that is perfectly okay. All right, moving on. Denise, just one, one quick point to step back to one thing that we walked over a little bit. Uh, when, the, when the vacancy takes effect, the select board is obligated to appoint someone to fill the vacancy. And that appointment has to occur. The statute uses the term forthwith, which is generally as soon as reasonably possible. So in this case, it would work well uh, with Judy's resignation being effective April 12th to appoint her to fill that vacancy. There's no prohibition that against filling a vacancy with someone who has resigned. So this actually will work out very well for the town. Okay, and the 10 days that the select board has starts effective April 12th, not the effective date of the memo to the board. That's correct. Okay, so by April 22. And, and I, know, I know Judy's planning to post something on the Front Porch Forum um, to everyone. Does the select board also post something on front porch form or how does that work? So the select board by statute has 10 days to post notice of the vacancy and it has to do so in at least two public places 
in the town and in or near the town clerk's office. So uh, that is an obligation of the select board. There's no reason why Judy couldn't do it on behalf of the select board, okay. so long as we hit those two public places and in or near the town clerk's office. Okay, I mean, we've ident we have identified our normal posting page places for agendas and things. So would we follow that same format? Yes, and I think you'd want to, you know, go a little bit above and beyond here, given the nature of uh, of the resignation and the, and the upcoming election, and and to generate interest in those who might be candidates. Okay, above and beyond meaning, what what are you thinking? Uh, you know, some maybe more than one posting in front porch forum, uh, just some additional advertisement of the vacancy so that folks, it might catch folks eye, eyes. You mean like maybe the newspaper? Sure. Okay. Um, so the first day to warn the election is May 22nd. Um, okay, consent. Petition and consent forms by May 24th. Right, it's a really quick turnaround. That's why yeah. we want to announce it soon. And what I'm thinking is to announce it and have a link to the website that has a lot of information about the job and yeah. and how and with links to to the um, the form they need the consent form that they need to submit and explanation that they don't need to have a petition with signatures because of COVID. Okay, so is there is there anything nuanced around the announcement? And this is, I think, also a Jim question. Um, is it is it is it permissible? I guess is the question um, that Judy announce that she will be resigning or is there a reason it should be an intent to resign for the date? I mean, given, so here's where my head is, given that Judy is elected by the town mm -hmm. and, and can actually change her mind. Right. Um, Judy, there's nothing about all of this. That, <laughs> right, no, <laughs> there's, I, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of, the, of reasons you wouldn't change I your know. mind. I'm aware of the got statute, to, right. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, so that's my question is, is Judy announcing that she's going to resign and there will be a, res a vacancy or that she intends to resign and there will likely be a vacancy? I guess that's my question. She can, she can announce that she intends to resign and there will be a vacancy. That's, there's, there's nothing inappropriate about doing that. Um, it's just that the, the official timelines don't start until the date of her actual resignation. I think I think I can write something up, and if you want to review it, um, to kind of explain the process of why we're doing this, because it may be confusing to people. Yeah. Yeah, it might be. Should we put something on our website, a place where potential candidates could actually post, kind of a you know their credentials or what they were, why they wanted to be you know, what, why they, they think they would be a good town clerk just for the public to access, kind of like a front porch forum. This would be a little bit more formal. You know, it would be open to anybody that ran for the slot. Would I don't that be know a that, good idea? I don't know that we should get into that. I don't know that that's the best way to use the website or the way that we should be using the website um, because, you know, if somebody wants to run for select board or lister, do we mm -hmm. want do we want the website to be a place where there's like candidate back and forth? I don't know. I don't even know if it's the right, you know, if it's appropriate to do that. I was just thinking in a special and in a with a kind of a special election environment, and we have limited time and mm -hmm. limited ways for people to get this information together. That's, that was my thought, but I hear you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did we introduce Bill, I mean, Jim to Rick? Hi, Jim. We've, we've met before, but. We, we have, Rick. Hello. I, I recall when you were on the school board. That's we met, right. We've we met then. That's <laughs> talked yep. several times. So. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, Jim, what, do you know what the guidelines are for 
town websites posting uh, something as Rich Rick has suggested? I think it's an interesting idea. I would I would advise against doing it. Okay. Um, as Denise pointed out, if you were to do it in this instance, um, potentially you're creating a public forum uh, for mm -hmm. candidates to announce and advertise their candidacies in every election held by the town going forward. And I think that um, I, I, I respect the need to get information out in this particular election quickly, but I don't think that you want to open up the town's website in that way. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, Cliff any... wants to say something. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Cliff. Yeah, um, I would strongly agree with what Jim just said. Um, I don't think it's the appropriate forum. It could set um, a problematic precedent. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a mechanism that we can use for that purpose, though. We can encourage people, and we have done this before, uh, encourage people who were on the ballot to make a statement on Front Porch Forum, introduce themselves to the community sure, sure. and uh, present their credentials. Yeah. And I think uh, that's something we can easily do should the need arise. That sounds good uh, to me. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it would be up to each candidate to, you know, write up their own blurb mm -hmm. about, you know, their credentials and why they would be a town, good town clerk or, you know, whatever the position is. Mm -hmm. I have a question uh, um, and that I'd like to offer to talk to people about the position. And I, w I don't know if, if um, it might be appropriate to have people come in and see, I might have, there's somebody chopping wood, I'll, I'll ask them to stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> um, to ask them to come and kind of shout out, you know, see how the town office works. And is there a limitation to how much of that we can do? if it's pre-election or is that just an informal arrangement? That would be an informal arrangement, Judy, between you and the candidate. Okay, I just need to get somebody to stop chopping wood, hang on. <laughs> right, but I mean, if and and the a piece of that would be, if you do it for one, you kind of gotta do it for anybody who wants to. It seems to me that any election where a candidate is running for an office, that's not probably a typical thing. If you're running for senator or councilman or mayor, I don't think that's something that typically the incumbent makes available to candidates who are running to replace them. Sorry. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, Barbara. I don't know that somebody couldn't ask um, in that situation and somebody could, you know, decline. But, you know, I think if somebody has a lot of questions, you know, the right person to ask is going to be Judy. Then probably what Judy needs to know is from Jim is if somebody does ask her, can she do that? Ask she me what? I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the conversation. It, your question, your your idea about having a candidate oh. come into the town office and meet with you and, and look at the vault and everything. Mm -hmm. Sure, she can. She can she can do that. It's someone came and asked her, Judy, please explain to me your job and the responsibilities and what you do on a typical day. There would be nothing that would prohibit Judy from assisting that person and explaining to them what the, what the job requires. Okay. Very good. Um, anything else folks want to talk about with regard to this? I'm, I'm just curious about when voting takes place for all these things that need to be select board decided. It seems like we might do it on um, April 12th, where we regretfully accept your resignation and ask you to serve as interim town clerk 
until the election takes place. And then we would have in the minutes, the different dates of the items like May 22nd, May 31st, so on. And then we would also have to decide, oh yeah, because you made a note, determine and vote on whether to mail ballots to all registers, voters or mail ballots upon request. So we would have to do that on April 12th as well. Mm -hmm. You'll also have to approve a warning for a special town meeting on April 12th. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So we should have a draft warning. Yep. Okay. And that would be included. Um, just trying to think. So we would have the warning and that would get posted like we normally post warnings as if it was a regular town meeting, right? That's correct. On May 22nd. Unfortunately, it can't be sooner than that, but we could still announce right. that it's happening, right? Yep. And just May 31st is the last day. But if we did it on May 22nd, we don't have to worry about May 31st. Right. You just get it done. Right. All right. Um, and then we've got to, we'll probably have to have a PCA meeting sometime or not. I'm not sure we do because um, the select, the Secretary of State corrected me. We can't change the checklist 90 days before an election. So there's no point in reviewing the checklist for challenging people, um, unless we just wanted to inform them of the election and make sure they're aware of it. I think probably people will be right. when we start circulating stuff. Um, no signature required, still no signature required, okay. Hey, Denise, one, one just quick point of clarification. Yes. So my suggestion to you would be to approve the warning for the special town meeting on the 12th. Uh, you will then post notice of the vacancy on the 12th. That will be the day or maybe the 13th will be the day that you get that notice out. Yeah. But you would not post notice of the special town meeting until the 22nd of May. Okay. There's no there's no problem in, in approving the warning on the twelfth of April and then posting it on the twenty second of May. But those are two steps that are going to be required. Okay. Katie, do you have all this for the minutes? Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah okay. we both do. Yeah. All right. Any other thoughts or questions? Anyone? Uh, the the general process. Oh, sorry. No, the, like, the general process of making candidates aware of what, of, no. Judy, will you be the one who kind of lets people know, okay, if you're interested in being town clerk, um, here's the process. You get signatures, you do this, you do that. I'm happy to answer questions. Well, that, that's in, what I'm thinking in, Inside that one little line, there's like, if I'm somebody who wants that job, I might be like, wait, Right. And that's what I'm thinking of having a whole area on the website where people who are interested will go. These are the forms you need. These are the steps. These are the deadlines. Uh, here's the job description. If you want more information, feel free to call me. That kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fine to post that. Sure. Katie, did you have something? Just a quick question for the to do list. Um, who who should I put to assign for create draft town warning? for the town clerk's election to be prepared for the April 12th meeting. Judy, are you able to do that? Um, I'll, I'll draft it, but I need somebody to look at it. Yeah, well, we can all look at it and send yeah. it to Jim for review okay. like we usually do. Okay. It's basically one item, right? Yeah. Oh, that's the, now there's another question I have. It's an opportunity for, uh, Another, if there's anything else that needs to be voted on, mm -hmm. zoning regulation or another elected position or whatever, um, it's an opportunity to have people vote. It, mm -hmm. it, you know, it complicates counting, but that's not an issue. I mean, we just sort that out. Well, I, I thought about zoning 
but I don't believe they're ready for that. Right. So, um, so it's a, a one issue, most likely a one issue warning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. There is an odd chance too, that you could get a petitioned article uh, from the voters. Um, mm -hmm. That the deadline for that would be 47 days before the meeting. So, um, you could approve the warning on the 12th, uh, see if anything comes in for a petitioned article, uh, assuming that nothing does, then post the warning uh, on the 22nd. 22nd of May. Of May, yes. Do we need to advertise that for that? Like announce that? No. Good, okay. Okay. All right. Sounds like a plan. I appreciate the time that you've taken to look this over and ponder it. And on April 12th, I assume, approve it. Right. All right. Yes. Thank you, Judy. For yeah, thank together. you again. Okay. Any other questions or comments, Jim? Any other thoughts or? Nope. Oh, I could send you what just uh, let's swing but swing if swing back to me around april just before april 12th and we can work out the details on the warning okay uh, the notice things like that and get all those buttoned down and and taken care of okay, okay. thank you okay thank, thank you. you all right you're welcome to hang around jim <laughs> do you need me to hang around folks not unless you want to okay thank you am, good thank you go, Go grab Thanks, some water. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening. Thank you too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's continue our discussion of the rules of procedure. Are you, I think Cliff's looking to call it up, right? I think I might bow out at this point. If I'm not needed. That's fine. Enjoy okay. your Thanks, evening. Judy. Thank you, Judy. Okay. See you, Judy. Like we'll Thanks, we'll Judy. Soon. Take care. Good night, Judy. Good night. Thanks. Barbara, did you want to say something? Barbara was waving by. Oh, she was waving by. I thought she wanted to say something. All right. Um, let me see if I can find that document. There's one in tonight's folder. It has um, the draft language that I did based on one item of discussion from last week. Okay, I'll pull that one up. If that works for everybody. Does everybody like this snow we got today? Did anybody else get snow or just over here in North Callis? Oh, yeah, we got it. <laughs> this was kind of ready Pretty to wild. move on this year. Pretty wild. Yeah, our power was out yesterday for several hours, and then it went out again twice today a couple times, which is really annoying. Wow. You just, do we want to just keep going or do you guys want to go back through that? Let's, let's go back through what changes we made. I just, I just drafted that one item. So I didn't see that there's any um, requirement that we not uh, flex the agenda. Um, and yet we had some discussion from last week about being predictable and letting and people being able to rely on it. So uh, Cliff, I took out, yeah, those, those were minor things. Let's go down to the, um,
So, so I, so my, Cliff. <laughs> Just tell me what paragraph. No, 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 back. No, no, that's it. That's it. The, that's the only, the only substantive change that we talked about. Um, a redraft is that language you just moved over. The big block in red? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, so I tried to walk that line of being predictable and also flexible. So I use this language of as a general matter, we'll conduct business. And this is true. We do that now. As a general mm -hmm. matter, we do things in the order that they're um, noticed on the agenda. Um, I took out or deletion from, and I don't know if that's correct. I mean, we do often not take up items and I wasn't sure where that idea that we can't delete things from an agenda comes from. Um, I think, Sharon, I think we can delete items yeah. or, or postpone items if, um, if we're not ready or somebody's not available. So I don't, right. yeah, I, I agree. I don't think that's a problem. So I took that out. Um, so any other adjustment? So so now it says, as a general matter, all business will be conducted in the more in the order it appears in the notice agenda, except that any addition must be made as the first act of business at the meeting. And I think that's what we do. And in fact, we generally don't. We add discussion items, but we don't add votes. No addition sh uh, shall be considered once the first act of business at the meeting has commenced. Any other adjustment to the notice agenda, for example, and this is just a punctuation change to set off this example because there was a whole confusing string of commas. Any other adjustment to the notice agenda, for example, changing the order of business, postponing or tabling actions may be made by a majority vote of the body. So it's basically that as a general matter, which creates both the commitment and the flexibility and then i added a new paragraph to the can i point. can i just say can i just say something on that mm -hmm. um i think that if an item is not on the agenda we can't vote on it until it's on needing a vote that's my that's, recollection and that's in the next paragraph okay except in emergency situations where i think we can right the body will conduct formal business only on items that were included in the notice agenda Wherever possible, the notice agenda will include the time of the vote on an item and the body as a general matter will conduct its vote at the time provided in the notice agenda. So that was something that John was suggesting is that we that we have times for a vote and we stick with it. But again, I thought, well, and then sometimes we're just gonna want flexibility. So that's where as a general matter is a useful thing. Okay. meetings. Okay. I'm not sure how far we got. I think we got about, well, I think they got my Cast one and see what page we are on. Yeah, I think we got as far as meetings because this document here doesn't have the items in it that Sharon had changed or elaborated on. What do you mean? The, the document I'm looking at has a lot of stuff in red and comments. Because the meetings, um, under meetings one, it was highlighted in yellow, um, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the town office, town hall or over Zoom. And I noticed noted that this was, um, revised language from section E1 of the current procedures that sometimes it's not, I don't want to, I don't want to say in this document. Cliff, can you scroll up? I think Denise is in a different spot than we are looking at. I'm under meetings. Is that not where we were? Okay. 
because you had put down seven to nine p.m. I think we need to again have some flexibility. That it, our goal is to adjourn by nine p.m., but that might not always necessarily happen. I think we need to have some language in there that states that we will. Our goal is to adjourn by nine p.m. But again, I think there has to be some flexibility if there's more discussion or the board agrees to continue discussing whatever item they're on. So how about that as a general matter phrase again? I'm making notes here. Okay. That's a good idea. As a general matter, regular mm -hmm. meetings. Right. Yeah, because not only may we need to extend the length of a meeting to accommodate the discussion, there are also times where we may start early as we do. Right, early. both ends. Right, so we need to not just say seven. I think we need to, these, this, it's, that's generally when we will meet, but if there's a reason to start earlier, which we have done quite a lot lately, or have a special meeting, which we do a separate agenda, I think we don't want to somehow this that sentence has to be flexible. Right, which we can accomplish by adding that phrase at the front as a general matter. Okay, so number two. Okay, you fixed that, thank you. And on number three at the end of the last sentence you say immediate attention by the public body aren't we wouldn't we just say immediate attention by the board i didn't make i i didn't choose that phrase i think the body is the phrase that's used throughout in that and that's in the true in the vlct base basis document as well um if we switch, Denise, we're going to have to go back and we'll have to switch everywhere because throughout it says the body. Does it? Okay. Maybe it doesn't. I just picked up on it because it's at the end of the sentence. Okay, number six. Um, we might want to put in the rules of procedure under number six that. Um, during COVID, the select board, when it's meeting by Zoom, has to take a roll call vote. Why are okay. why are we are we jumping from three to seven for any reason? The numbering. I think the numbers are just messed up. Just That's the all. messed up format. Okay, making yeah. sure. It's actually not in the one I'm looking at, but whatever, that's a detail. Thanks for pointing it out, Rick. Yeah, no, I just. I think it's just Google mashing up the Word document. Yeah. Thank you, Google. Okay. Now we're on the one that I have on my printed copy is number seven, but here it shows it as number eight. Hi, Betsy. You're on mute, Betsy. Um, I've got background noise, so I will mute. Okay, did you have anything you wanted to talk with us about or? No, I just I'm once in a while I like to listen to the meetings. Okay, good. Well, thank you. Okay, so let's review these items. I had one item I'd like to add to the list. After D on this list, ask any questions and then ask if there are any questions or comments of the public in attendance as a separate item, unless it's already there and I missed it. 
It's in the one before where that let where what I was imagining, Denise, is that is that you kind of do sweep. The chair does sweep, whoever it is. So each of us, so the person who's got the item presents it. What could be one of us, could be somebody from the public. Um, then we each ask questions in turn for clarification. Then the public, then you do sweep. I don't, I, don't see, I guess I'm missing where, where you have that. I'm, tell me what letter it is that's there. C, invite each member of the body. So the body being the board? Oh, you're right. It doesn't say public. I don't know why I keep, I guess I was looking at saying it's right there. It's not right there. Okay. So you're right. So then the public after the chair. After, yeah, after, right. Okay. Is that so? All right. Well, is that, does that feel right or does it feel more right for you to be sweep and do after the public? So that after I usually, you I ask usually, any final questions. We usually like to give the board members a chance to talk. Um, and I suppose that it, it would make sense for the members of the public to have a chance to speak and then maybe based on what somebody from the public says, you know, it might open up, oh yeah, that's a good question. And the board might have kind of a similar question. Um, so it's kind of like a, it's a kind of a little bit of flexibility and making sure everybody's had an ample opportunity to speak or raise questions or ideas. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a follow-up so, uh, opportunity. So I made, yeah, I just made a note. I drew an arrow on my draft version here and made a note public after chair, final board questions, then the motion. Right, and then on number F or letter F, um, any board member can make the motion. It doesn't have to be the person introducing the item. That's not mm -hmm. a requirement. No, it's not, but it could be. It could not, not a requirement again, but I think it would be, I would like to see that practice. I would like to see that one of us, when one of us has, is a liaison or has a, a, has an ownership, if you will, of a, of an item that, that the motion comes from, from us. And actually what a lot of boards do is the motion is the first thing that's made. The motion comes first with a and second. Mm -hmm. and, and then, then all then all of the discussion yeah. so that you always know again what the ask is what are we asking for what are we trying mm -hmm. to accomplish here so the whole discussion is informed by that um and that that practice coming from the person who's bringing the item makes a lot of sense to me mm -hmm. but either either way having whether it's done upfront or done by the person who is bringing the item ensures that we've got a clear, I mean, what, I, what I'm imagining is that rather than wondering and sort of, sort of playing around with, we've actually done a little bit of thinking about it in advance because this is something I've spent a lot of time working on. And so I know mm -hmm. that this is kind of the shape of the motion. And maybe I've listened to the discussion and I've tweaked it a little bit, but generally. Yeah, I mean, I don't it, have any, I'm sorry. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be, but I, but honestly, I don't read the, anything here that it has to be. And what we've, what we've been saying is that by writing our process down, we're, um, we're creating the specific, specificity we need to change our behavior. But I think it would be good to say, maybe you could say as a general rule, as a general something or other, as we did in other things, the liaison would make the motion. But I think we need to be clear that it doesn't have to be that person. I would like to make sure that we say that so it's clear. Okay. Okay, how's everybody doing? 
All right. Anything else on um, anything else in that list, folks? Cliff, um, Rick? No, that I. So I mean, are we are we talking about moving that request for motion then up in the in this process definitely, or are we going to does that stay? I mean, we don't have to decide definitely tonight because I'm imagining that we'll all want to take one more look at this and weigh in and have some further discussion on some of the items. Mm -hmm. So let's. I don't okay. think I don't think we should approve anything until we're until John's here and we're a full board anyway. Yeah, that's fine. This is yeah. kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, okay, public participation. All right, number one, doesn't look like there was any changes made for the previous rules. And I guess I, I, I wanna better understand number two. But I have to go get my water, I'll be right back. My water is empty. I should ring a bell for a refill. I'm holed up in the corner upstairs. <laughs> you are too, Katie, right? You're yeah. off in some, yeah, upstairs corner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the couch in the middle of Grand Central Station in our house. <laughs> All meetings. So I'll I'll just I'll say um, while we wait for Denise I don't remember maybe this is something that I added because one of the things that I that I notice is that sometimes I mean we always have I think the concept that our um, public uh, public comment time is about fifteen minutes um, and if we have a timed agenda we are definitely going to have to know what time are we committing to public comment? Um, and to me- hey, I'm back, thanks for waiting. Yeah, oh, I was starting to talk to Nice. So if a couple of things, one is if we have a, if we have a timed agenda, we're definitely gonna have to have, you know, how much time do we generally devote to public comment? Um, so that's, if we can't do a timed agenda without, you know, making that that decision. Mm -hmm. The other the other thing is that sometimes a, a an item that shows up as public comment and it is public, but it's a big topic. And to me, you know, what if instead of having a topic like that throw off our agenda? we recognize, okay, this is a really important topic. Thank you so much for bringing it to us. Uh, we wanna put time on another agenda so that it's not a, so it's, it's so it, it means just because it comes into, just because the input stream is from public comment doesn't mean that it can't be a regular agenda item on the board's agenda at another meeting with more time. That's, that's what I mean by that. So like if somebody wants to say, hey, I, you know, thanks for public comment time. I hope you guys are aware of blah, 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 blah. I wanted to get it here. I know you probably want me to come back another time. We'll have more time to talk about it, that sort of thing. Okay, because currently we always have an agenda item that is public comment. Three, right. quarters, of, three quarters of the time, there isn't any. Sometimes right. somebody just wants to make an announcement and right. I've seen, and I have seen us take somebody who has a public comment and put it on our future agenda. So I don't see where this is changing what we currently do. It may it may not be, it may not be. And and this is is this? I, I just want to make sure. You were asking where it was coming from, and so right. so if if there's any change from from the basic the basis document, it would be shifting of an item that all, you know, that shows up as public comment and, but feels bigger than a bread box into, you know, kind of corralling it at a, at a 15 minutes 
and and so, and inviting more time on another agenda when it's actually on the agenda. That's so all assuming, that I was trying to say. So assuming no, and then with no action taken, so that it's you're not discussing it after the fact. That's the right. yeah. Well, right. we well, and if somebody brings an item to us that requires that we take some action, we have to put it on a future agenda, anyways. Right. Right. But also we've had topics that don't actually require action and may not require more than 15 minutes and still somehow they get it. So, and can throw our agenda, our time, our evening way, way off. So, so this is, well, no, I was saying, so this is really intended then for, I mean, we always, there's some of these issues that we're going to have that are really contentious. So we're gonna know about that and we'll probably a lot sufficient time and an agenda for those but this is really for those things that maybe we get more feedback than we thought we were going to have so it gives us a way of kind of keeping a meeting on track but simultaneously allotting the appropriate time to the public later just lets right. us say okay we're going to give this more time but what yeah, I, 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 I like that but what no but what i see is that these are items that are not on the agenda Right, not, Rick. not items that are on the agenda, and I don't want to end up like some boards that shall oh, remain. Oh, okay, okay. I'm remain fine. nameless that we <clears throat> only allow public comments at the beginning or the end of a meeting. Some boards do that, and I don't think that serves the public well, and it doesn't serve our constituents well to limit that because we normally have a practice, and I think it works well, and people appreciate it from what I've heard of hearing from the public on any agenda item that comes up. The point, I, don't wanna, I, mean, what, I agree, yeah, I, I was what misunderstanding. I, what, what I'm trying to accomplish is not having 15 minutes for public comment at the top of the agenda turn into an hour. Yeah, I got you, I, that makes perfect sense, yeah. And then so, what are we, so as for timing the agenda, you allow 15 minutes and nobody shows up, until five minutes before the 15 minutes is going to end. I'm just trying to think of, you know, trying to keep an agenda on schedule, putting in times of when items will occur. Are we just going to sit there for 15 minutes waiting for people to comment? Are we going to move on? How do you see I would, that? How do you I see would, that yeah, I would say that we, we, move on maybe the timed agenda item is up to 15 minutes so that we're that like on a timed agenda you're you're noting <laughs> there's no promise we're going to sit in total our hours for 15 minutes um so up to 15 <laughs> minutes and then yeah if somebody comes in you know 10 minutes into the 15 and we've started to do other business then i suppose and i think we would do this anyway um i would i think we should you know, give them the perfect person who shows up at seven, 10, five minutes, mm -hmm. because, because we got five more minutes left on the time that we set aside to hear for public comment by seven fifteen, Um, and yeah, I, and I think that's, I think that's fair. I think it's fair. I don't think we should at seven 30, um, be taking public comment unless it's unless it fits in one of you know that that item we just hit where we're we have an agenda item and there's somebody there from the public for that item okay cliff you wanted to speak yeah another way you could deal with that is you could move that item to the end of the agenda which item cliff the section where we allow public comments for items not on the agenda you make it the last 15 minutes of the meeting. Mm, can we? We can do we can do the agenda however we want. Um, I do think it should say in there somewhere a lot of public comment for items not appearing on the agenda or not scheduled. Oh, you, you do say that, I'm sorry. No, you're saying to be scheduled for a future meeting. I wanna make sure that we say that public comment is for items currently not on the agenda but they could be scheduled as an agenda item for a future meeting if need be. 
So at each meeting, there will be 15 minutes allotted for, well, and actually to Cliff's point, it doesn't say where on the agenda it's gonna be. 15 minutes allotted for public comment on items not on the agenda. All right, well, let's think about it. Yeah, my point was only to, was literally not letting 15 minutes of public comment take up an hour on items mm -hmm. not on the agenda, mm -hmm. which has happened. Yeah, that's yes, definitely a good, has. you're right. That's a... Okay, number three. Comments by the public. Anybody have any comment on number three? No, that's comment, comment should be plural. And it should be a the before board. Okay, number four. So you say accept during the 15 minutes of public comment. So let's say we have three people showing up to make a public comment. Um, there's got to be some order in which to take those comments. Because you say accept during the 15 minutes of public comment. There has to be some way to have that organized. Uh, so, we already covered that though on the other and during yeah. a meeting topic. Mm -hmm. So then we don't need that in there then. Well, uh, Members of the public must be acknowledged by the chair, except during 15 minutes of public comment, the chair will not acknowledge. We could move it. It says it pretty pretty clearly. I um, I actually like it. I even you're right, Denise. It's redundant, but I like it. I like it here in a section called public participation because if I'm a member of the public and I go to look at the select board's procedures to see, you know, where how how am I addressed in there? It's it's one stop shopping by leaving that in there. It's not it's not conflicting with what we said earlier. It's reinforcing it. I yeah, agree I, with I, I agree I, with Sharon. I think that has this this deals with the public comment part of the meeting. But it also, in the same paragraph, is dealing with item discussions during the meeting. And it's just setting down the rule that we discuss first, then we hear the comment. We may discuss after we hear a comment, but I think this is necessary here. I think it's. I guess I have to think about it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And I can assure you that most members of the public are not gonna go and read our rules of procedure. No, sure. but we, but we, we will. will. We will, right. we and, will. That's, and, and, we, and having them and discussing them and then, you know, in a week or two adopting them um, gives us that, you know, that anchor. Mm -hmm. That that you know we can say this is not how it works. It is. I mean, we've said this. We are to some extent going to, in order for me to for this to work, we're going to have to be disciplined and we're going to have to mean it and focus. Well, and it'll be it'll be good to be able to pull these out to say this is what we have done, and there was mm -hmm. ample opportunity for the public to weigh in on our discussion about this. But this is I think our I, third. I still think this is, I guess I just still have a 
concern about except during the 15 minutes piece. I guess I'll have to think about it. Well, Denise, um, all, it's, all it's saying is, as you already said, it's already saying what we already talked about and I thought we agreed to earlier. Uh, it's just repeating it in a place that is aligned with the hiding of public participation, except during yeah. the 15 minutes, the chair will not acknowledge or invite comment from members of the public until all members of the board have completed questions and comments. To me, that's okay, a no-brainer. And, and I said, I want to think about it. All right, number five. Yeah, I think we I think we try to do this now, so it's good to have it in writing. And I think this is yeah. I think this is kind of mostly what we have now. Okay, number six. Um, I would agree with number six. Anybody else have comments on number six? Isn't that right out of the VLC t shirt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. I checked. Yep. So. Okay, seven. I don't. I think this is either what we had or directly out of the LCT. Can you guys hear that drilling? Yeah. It's all oh, right. Okay. All it's right. okay. I can, I can close the door. Um. Number seven. The only time I remember this anything getting to this level is when and it didn't because we we had a plan and it was well managed but that um the memorial hall conversation we had at town hall that big meeting yep. kind of fell into this this category yep and we received high remarks high praise for our handling of that um seven Yep. And what did I, I had something here. B, bring in my room for first time allotments. Yeah, this is new language. Yeah, we don't want to stifle public comment and participation, but we need to manage it in a timely fashion. Because we could have an agenda item that is warned and we think we're all we're all said and done. And then somebody from the public might come in at the last minute, which they often do, and raise an issue that we hadn't thought of or something like that. So we want to make sure that we don't stifle that participation. Right. I agree. But wherever possible, we may also want to say, okay, we didn't leave enough time on this week's agenda. Um, and we want to have a half hour on the next agenda, or yeah. it might, it yeah. might reveal that there's just more research for somebody to do, you know, right. go that's, back. What I'm think that's what I'm thinking. Yep. And yeah, either I, way, either way, you're getting it out of tonight's agenda and you don't have to ha necessarily hash it all out in the meeting. Right, because I've seen that happen where people have raised issues sort of at, at the last minute and would have been nice to know sooner. But, you know, that's just the nature of people. Well, it, it's a good idea if, you know, when if in a situation like that where doubt is raised, you don't want to force a decision. You want to it needs to be thoughtful and you know so you do i agree we want to a lot more time at a few you know so we all 
to, to time to digest that and discuss it further. I think that's completely appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Well, everybody, um, Cliff, do you have any further thoughts or comments? No, I, I think what we've agreed is that we'll all have an opportunity to uh, spend uh, another bit of time reviewing everything. And then when the full board meets again, we can agree to move forward um, or adjust as uh, we might see fit. <laughs> okay, very good. All right, good discussion, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, would you like to do some minutes? We're a little behind in getting some minutes done. So let's start out with the, whatever the oldest ones are. I think they might be the informational meeting, Katie. Yes. We probably didn't even really have to do minutes, but I, I think it's good that we have it documented what the discussions were. So thank you for doing a good job on that, Katie. Sure, thank you. Okay, I'm assuming everyone can see that okay. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. I saw some minor edits, but I don't see anything major. Yeah, there was one thing there where I had said, war can you go back up with where it says, one. where I said warned, it's warned items somewhere. Um, also, there's in the attend uh, above the attendees, Melanie Keene's name is there, but it was actually me. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I Are was you just sure? using Melanie Zoom at the time. So Are you sure? I'm positive. <laughs> okay. And Jim O'Reardon's name has an apostrophe after the O. And it was actually um Pam DeAndrea there. Kind of the same thing. It wasn't Jim O'Reardon, it was Pam DeAndrea. Um, using Jim O'Reardon's account. Now, where is Jim O'Reardon? He's kind of down, down at the bottom. Right there. So we don't even need him in there because he wasn't really there. There was a question from Craig Line that I don't see here. Well, can we do this one? Yeah, as sorry. We, as we I'm sorry. Through? Sorry. That's um, Warned. There was a thing where I said it was warned items because it said something else, and I can't. Where did I? Where did I want that to be? Oh wait a minute. Um. Oh, I know where it says. But we cannot act or amend questions today. It was we cannot end act or amend warned articles instead of questions. Yeah, or, yeah, that would good catch. Okay, moving along. Everybody good with that? Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Is this where you wanted to mention something about Craig Line under public comment or something, Sharon? I think Sharon, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Sorry guys, uh, Craig, Craig asked us about the select board assistant and uh, and I don't, I'm just scanning. I don't 
see that question and we will want to make sure that we capture. I think there's something there if we can. I, when I read this before, I remember seeing some that in here somewhere. Yeah, yeah I know. I thought it was under Article Three, which we just passed by. Right. It's it's um, item number five, titled Article Three, the first paragraph. Yeah. Craig Line asked, "Please explain." Okay. And and we did. Okay. Thank you for. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Didn't. Yep. And didn't we answered find it. Pam's question. Indices will be added to allow viewers to gain more information on each map. Pam continues. Yeah. And the questions are a little bit stilted because I copy and pasted them so that people could see what they actually asked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, instead of saying we are sad to see Jennifer go, I, we could say leave the commission. That would be great. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. well, can you, Katie, could you double check the spelling of Joe? Magna's name, or maybe you already have. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking it doesn't have. I think I'm thinking it's M A G A N, but we need to double check. Okay, I'll make a note to look it up. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, number eight. Anybody have anything else on seven? Nope. Yeah, you did an amazing job, Katie. Okay. Yeah, you did. Okay. Seems like a long time ago. Doesn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Anything else on uh, on these? Would somebody like to make a motion to approve them? Move to approve. I'll second that with the changes. Um, ready to vote, Rick? Aye. I'm an I. Sharon. Hi, Cliff. Hi. All right, done. So next is I think March. I think March eight are the next ones, correct? Uh, I think. No, we have some from a meeting of the February twenty second. Oh, okay. Oh, my clock is flashing, so I have no idea what time it is. Should I abstain on this ground since I was not present at this meeting? Do I abstain on this or does it matter? Yeah, I mean, it, technically, a board member doesn't have to abstain for a meeting that they didn't attend. But you weren't really, you weren't elected yet. Right, that's what I'm. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't, um, I think we just want to add a sentence about we reviewed the treasurer report, which we did. Um, Curtis Cameron. Okay. 
and I made a comment there somewhere, how repairs would be paid for ownership and state permitting. I think it is after it's the one, two, three, four, fifth line down. How repair, yeah. And I guess what I said worked thus far. I don't remember why I said that. You need to change the end, end of the sentence and hope to work together. No, I don't think so. Hmm. Oh, well. Yeah, and I don't remember what that permits have already been secured. I'm not remembering that from my history on that task force. Right. Would you have to specify just out of, I mean, work together on what? <laughs> that that's the. Uh, I think it should probably be a little bit more specific than that. Okay. Can you go back up? Work together. Exploratory group is within this. Well, I, I and. And if they didn't say, if we don't remember what they said, then I think sometimes we have half conversations and things don't actually get said mm -hmm. out loud because everybody kind of knows. So what we could do, I would feel okay with Katie, like a bracketed completion of the thought, even though it might not have been in the minutes. Do people feel okay with that? That makes, think, that's a good idea. Yeah, I know. I think we need to say something, work together. Um, what, what they're hoping for is the town, the, the town and this exploratory group can work together to come up with a solution. That's pretty vague. Yes. Yeah. Big enough? Good enough? Yeah, no, if it were, if it were, if we were like being specific, right, then mm -hmm. I would want it. I would want to be clear that it might not have been said, but I don't care about that. Yeah. I think what didn't get said was that I, I wasn't part of the discussion years past, but there was kind of the allude, alluding to that there were some challenges in working together in the past and they, they were here on goodwill was mm -hmm. this I got having not been involved in the past. Yeah, there were some issues, but I don't think we need to, mm -hmm. we don't need to get into that. I think we just coming up with a solution, but I think you're, you're right. There were some issues. Um, on these minutes, I would, I think it's good that we go through them, but I had, a, I think this, was this the one where I had a question for John? We may not want to approve these without John looking at them either, because I know he'll have very strong thoughts about, mm -hmm. about well, we this. Could, yeah, and especially about the permits. He'll remember um, mm -hmm. if there were permits and probably what they are, if there are any. Oh, this is a place where that came up specifically. Yeah, Denise yeah. asked a question and it occurred to me, sometimes the answer is, the question is exactly right, but it wasn't said. Yeah. But I think we can whittle them down to maybe just asking at the next meeting John's at our questions of his thoughts on this. Mm-hmm. That I just fly because that didn't make any sense to me. Oh, remember, the, remember we John had been giving us routine updates about that um, case that was at the Attorney General's office with Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District dumping mm -hmm. glass where it wasn't supposed to. Right. Um, I, the, the part that didn't make sense is that he that the FOIA request was in his professional capacity. And it, if that's not if that's not accurate, he won't want that in there. <clears throat> I think he did say that, but we could again ask him. So we can just yeah, leave I that. I recall that uh, he said that this is something he did as as part of his day job. But yeah, he can verify it since we're not going to. 
formally sign off on these until John's part of the group. Yeah, right. And I think I, I it, maybe, maybe, um, or maybe he said that he 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 does a lot of FOIA requests, and so he you know just did one for this. But they're not. But he didn't do a FOIA request on this topic for his work. Yeah, he. Well, I know he did because I saw the document. He did. Yeah. Okay. All right. But we can have him confirm it. Oh. Um. This again might have been filling in the the gaps, things we know, but let's see why it did I thought make a complete story. Okay, anybody have any changes to any of these bullets? Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, that is part of the conversation with Ruben is um, kind of a gap analysis of uh, where we're at and where they see uh, our potential needs, uh, IT needs going forward. Yeah. And also an opportunity for us to provide them with any feedback of issues that have come up over the past uh, year of the contract. Yeah, that's what we agreed to and Ruben agreed to come to the board with his concerns or issues that we haven't maybe thought about with things that we need to do or upgrade. <sighs> Okay. Anything else from what we can see on the screen? All right, so Katie, maybe you could make the changes that we've agreed to. Yes. And then the ones that need John's input, we could just leave them those comments there. Can you do that? Yep. Okay, great. Can we call that good? Because we're we're what time, what time is it? One, it's one twenty. It's eight twenty. Cliff, that yeah. was waiting for you to say. We <laughs> we said we were only going to do an hour. Well, I was thinking we were going to be able to get through this a little bit quicker, but I'm uh, I'm agree. I'm perfectly happy to wrap up at this point and get to the I do have next round. I do have one item that um, we need to do. It is the result of our executive session last meeting where we came out of the executive session and said what we were gonna do. We didn't make a motion. So this to me is housekeeping of old business. Um, it has to do with the letter to EMFD. I have the letter all ready to go. And then I was looking at the minutes and we didn't make an, a formal motion to send the letter to the East Montpelier Fire Department and East Montpelier Select Board. So it's sort of- We're a, not too late, are we? No, we no. just I just need to get this out right away. I make so a I motion wanna, that we approve the letter that- uh, Actually, that I we, think it should be that we make a motion that we will send a letter. Okay, uh, that we- asking to unbundle we're going to you know want to reopen this contract and discuss it again and renegotiate negotiations yeah. yeah i mean and i have it i, I have it yeah. all on my computer on letterhead i just realized that we didn't make a motion that's what comes of and we weren't even that late i guess can't say that right. uh so cliff did you just make a motion i would make that motion second, well, second. did that work for you katie uh-oh uh -oh. i think katie's, katie's froze locked up. Cliff, maybe you can type, uh, send Katie an email with the motion you made. Yes, I will do that. Okay. Are you ready to vote? Is Rick. anybody second? Yes. Yes. Aye. I seconded. Okay. I'll make a note of that as well. And Rick's an aye. I'm an aye. Sharon? Aye. And Cliff? Aye. All right. Our next Official meeting date is April 12th. So does everybody agree to a Monday night off? Yes. Do we have a, we have a Monday off? Okay. 
Yeah, don't let this, you know, don't get used to this. Don't no, get too good. excited. Don't be too excited. No, it's good. <laughs> it it's kind trouble. of sad how excited I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, all right. Don't get over, there emotion- overzealous either because nature abhors a vacuum and something could always rise to fill that space. <laughs> That's yes. right. We're in disaster season. <laughs> All right. Would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. moved. And who seconded it? I seconded. Everybody. <laughs> everybody did. Okay. Everybody Rick. moved and everybody seconded. Aye. Rick, would you like to vote? And aye. I'm an aye. Sharon is an aye. Aye. And Chris and I. No, All right. I'm gonna be a nay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for I coming, would, Betsy. I would say something, but we're on camera. <laughs> we're being recorded. I'll be. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night Betsy. Betsy. Good See night. you Thursday, Betsy. <laughs>